Hmm. Uh, again, family, this is is to me a teachable moment of just how um how dangerous and just how insidious this whole race thing is in a country that was built on race but had the nerve to say we want a more perfect union and have all this hypocritical environment and still not wanting to hold people accountable even over 400 years later we don't want to even hold an insurrectionist accountable for storming the White House on January 6th. This is the consequence when you don't tell the truth to people. When you have a nation built on lies and deceit and treachery and evilness. What happens when the sons and the daughters and the great son, great grandsons and the great granddaughters of these lies and people have to live side by side with one another. And actually, in some cases, develop genuine relationships with one another. And then you want us to fight through all this murk when you know the infrastructure and the systemic madness that you have created and that you won't hold yourselves, this government, accountable for then how do you expect to have peace in this place? How? This is just wash, rinse, repeat. Wash, rinse, repeat. Trayvon Martin, uh, Breonna Taylor, Emmett Till. It can go on and on and on. My brother, Lamont, I can't listen. The, the fact of the matter is I've never seen anything either such as egregious as what has happened to Ahmad Aubrey, especially in 2021. But you got to realize that we are people that they gave surgery to without any anesthesia because they said we can deal with the pain. So they don't mind continuing to inflict pain after pain after pain after pain on us because they want this to be a permanent state for us. Receiving their lies, a constant uphill battle for, for freedom, justice, and, and some kind of equality. They want to keep on continuous to lock our men folk up so they can be like the little engine that could. They push the system, keep the system going, and everything is built off our misery in the backs of black and brown people. And until we can deal with that and come to some kind of... Um, Uh, 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 reconciliation behind this craziness. Then y'all ancient y'all, you know, you're pushing for some kind of uh, civil or in, in race war to get worse and worse and worse because the people don't know the truth. And when you stop the truth, you stop the healing process. You steady right now trying to keep <laughs> making sure they don't teach anything about race in school. How long do you want to keep running from your shameful, dirty history that you that you did? That you did. You we had we know what you did because we're the sons and and daughters that you are the people you did it to. So every time you look at us. You see that. And that is why you can deal with a foreign black person easier or a, a, a brown person um, a, from another uh, country than you can deal with American, uh, African Americans, as I guess that's what we call ourselves these days. Because you really feel like it's too much. You feel like you own us. You feel like every institution that you mistreat us is going to validate it for you. Because we're the proverbial whipping uh, stepchildren. 
the Cinderellas of the society, if I, if you will. Except we treat it worse than her. So the police department was allowed to lie and cover up this for two weeks. And you heard the man say, they stopped calling him back. He would call, they wouldn't even answer the phone. They don't even want to speak to him no more. Because they don't want to talk about what they know they was covering up. For Amar Aubrey. Then you got all this stuff with Jackie Johnson, the DA. She covering up. She telling them, don't arrest these people. Don't arrest the McMichaels. Then you got um well we'll 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 talk about that later. Because um we'll get it in this one, I'm hoping. How Amar Aubrey, I mean how uh, um McMichael's daughter she was playing this stuff on Snapchat. Talking about um, that she was she's a racist, in other words. They said she would walk around the hood talking about my father could do this because my father is a, a, a special investigator. So they were using a statue um, of what their father did, Greg McMichael, as a bullying tactic. As a platform to threaten uh, the other fellow white uh, people. Okay. Yet you saw people up there in the court talking about, I'll give my house to them. Yeah, I know you would. I'll put up anything for their bond. This next segment right here is real important to me because they talked to the aunt about since for two months everything was dead, nobody ain't said nothing. And every time you go into the uh, call the police station, they don't want to talk to you. So what's your next step? So that's what the family was asked. Well, what did y'all do? Because it's really like a standstill. The world just thought it was a man shot. The, uh, well, Brunswick did. A guy shot because he tried to make a home invasion. But there was one person that knew different. But anyway, we're going to continue. Ruby, can you walk me through when your family realized this is something that we need to get out to the public? And you felt the doors were closed as far as justice for Ahmad's death. Was there a conversation about are we going to start protesting or are we going to start getting this out to the public? The day when me, my brother, my, my two brothers, right here, they in the office, we kept going to the courthouse, going to the jailhouse, to talk with the man, talking about we doing this, we doing that. And my brother then were questioning him, y'all well, need to show us what's being done. My son ain't did no home invasion, none of this. He kept saying that's what it was. My brother and my, um, my two brothers kept saying that, no, that's not him. Y'all don't know his character, that's not him. So our next step, we went to a lawyer. A lawyer that my brother then was raised up, we went to school with. He turned us down. They didn't want to touch it. Flat mm. down. We had a lot of people turn us down. In the, in the system. In the court system. Turned us down. But we didn't give up. We kept fighting. We kept fighting. And all of us connected together, we got together. And we said, this ain't going down like the system. That's my first time hearing that story, but yes. you know, back, back up what she's saying, um, through the whole protest, it was, I can't say what it was female, male, what color, whatever, it was an officer who kept telling me, like, something grew up about me. My mama you know, always said, certain words and how to go up. my mama always told me, God always got a ram in a bush, always, and, um. Those are the words I live by. Because there was somebody that did that wanted to remain anonymous. But they wanted that family to have the information. We always got to have allies, people. That's why it's so important to keep your mind open even when everything around you wants you to shut it down. You can't do it. You got to have that little bit of crack so the light can shine in. Because everybody needs allies. And this is what happened. This is what got this case moving, and we all saw it. About it, and, and was sending messages to other people. 
Um, I never spoke on it. So um, when the video came out, I knew. I said, you know what? It's time to go out there. We had a whole group on Facebook. They had made on Facebook, I remember. And I kept telling everybody, man, we need to go out there and do a protest. We need to go out there and do a protest. Mm-hmm. But everybody, let the police handle it. Let the police handle it. We couldn't get information. They wouldn't give us reports at first. They wouldn't do nothing. Mm-hmm. They wanted him to look like he broke somebody's house. They wanted to make it look but like he broke somebody else. Out, that's when it was like, oh, well, we care. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all this stuff here. So all of the stuff, the news out they was putting out first, all this stuff is fake. All the characters is fake mm-hmm. because they... There you go. I personally know that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just certain people ain't willing to give up their job. Right. Well, I mean, to make mm-hmm. the right choice and say, hey, this is a racial situation. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we, like he said, he got a family that, like, he, they've been fighting with him since day one. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this whole situation is racial. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. You can't beat around the bush. That's right. Mm-hmm. They that my brother came in from Florida. He didn't even go home. He came straight where we were. And me, him, and Gary rolled to Satilla. And that's when we all. Um, I think this is a very powerful statement right here. Because the aunt said they drove to Satilla Shores um, when their brother came on up from Florida. Uh, because, uh uh-uh, uh, they're not going up there. They said they were close knit family. See? And, um, all of us ain't as scattered as y'all think. Okay? And we know crap when we hear it. And we sick of it. So when the brother came up. And they. When he went there. And they, like she said. They decided to go to the spot. Here's something. To me. That is very very powerful. And they talk about Travis. Coming out. The, the one that shot the boy. He came out. While he was on out. While he was out. Because he hadn't been arrested yet. And he saw them in his neighborhood. And he still ain't had enough yet. Watch this. And I tear up every time. Because it was, it was crazy. Because my brother here got out of the truck first. And he said take a picture of this house. They take a picture of that house, take a picture of this house, and pick up somebody to see you from. And so as my brother Mark was back in here, we did where well, I can get out. And we went to see where he got killed at. And I had on a white shirt, like my sister said, and I kneeled down and I put my white shirt in there. I said, it's the blood right here. And so the guy that killed my brother, my nephew, he come out there. And I thank God for this day. Then we didn't know what we doing. He told us to get up out that neighborhood, and that's where my brother Mark said, I ain't going no damn well. Because this was my son got killed, and we come to find out what's going on. He said, now you could take your up out of here. And that's what he did. So I just thank God for just to be out there and to, I felt, I felt so much racism out here when I went out there. I was shaking all over the place. I was all over the place. Because I was scared. Because for well, your neighbors, I, 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 I got neighbors that stay by me, and when we feel gunshot, we all come out the door to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And for the neighbors to be in that cool of area and didn't even come out to see what was going on, why is y'all hurting this child? Why is y'all doing this to this child? Because I'm a mother. My mother instinct kick in. I don't care what color you are. My mother instinct kicks in. Right. Hey, come on. Why is y'all doing it? this child like this here? Nobody came out. I fooled everybody. Just That's from right. Death in that neighborhood. Because none of y'all came out. That's how they are. None of y'all. It was, it was one lady that. It was one lady. Me up so bad. I can't even go in that neighborhood. Yeah. And know what? This lady spoke out. Listen, and listen to this. She was the only one came and spoke out. And did what she moved and sold her house. She came out and said, "Why was nobody arrested?" Because she watched it. Her window got shot out. She just had a little arm bone baby. The pellets hit the window of her house. Her kid could have got shot. But she was the only one spoke out. And guess what? After she spoke out, she put her house up for sale. She sold the house. She moved. Y'all heard that? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So when you look at this bastard sitting up there in court with these big fake fucking fake fake ass crocodile tears talking about he's sad and I wish they had the death penalty. I really do. I wish they had the death penalty and that they would fry their asses. Because he still wasn't done with it. He still told his family knowing he had shot their relative. Because why would they be there looking at the blood? Why would they be there crying? And I know how we are. See, we're spiritual. So no matter how crazy we act, how we're grassroots people. So when we go there, sometimes we just got to see the spot sometimes. We got to lay hands on the spot. We got to do all kinds of things that may not make sense to other groups. If unless they're connected to the universe that way. Some people are more technical. They can't get with that. But the fact that this man will come out of his doors for a second time after he didn't kill somebody for being in that neighborhood, actually tell them to get out of the neighborhood. He told them to get out of there. And it took Mark to say, you better take your ass back in the house. My son got killed right here. Can you imagine what that would have looked like? Had they realized that that guy that came out and told them to get their ass out of here was the same one that killed their boy? Huh? Y'all. Can you deal with that? Listen to the daughter. See? And it's a reason why I say all in the family, okay? Because some stuff is all in the family. You don't have, if you've been brought up like this in hatred, and it's like cancer or a disease, and you, your whole family has it. You know, all of y'all are, are, are afflicted with this particular virus, okay? And so if a, if a child comes to birth as an empath, and he's in a family that's surrounded because there are families that are white and they give birth to a spirit of a John Brown or something or Viola Luso. And they sitting up in here with these parents and they like, oh, man, I, I got to get away from these people. And I can't go live with grandma because she's just as bad. Or I can't go live with aunt so-and-so, so-and-so. And they end up being nomads, you know, or in in some black church. You know, I hey, listen. I've seen a lot in, in, in my years, okay? And this right here, this right here, like I said, it take the case. But check this out about his sister. Learning more about the sister of Ahmaud Arbery's accused killer, the son, a UK-based tabloid newspaper, reported last week that Lindsay McMichael posted a picture of Arbery's body on Snapchat the day he was killed. <sighs> McMichael's brother and father are charged with felony Snapchat. murder in this case. Lizzie McMichael reportedly told the tabloid she posted the picture because she is a true crime fan. On your side, Tori Kless has the story tonight. Jennifer Smith is an acquaintance of Lindsay McMichael. Smith says she was disgusted when learning the graphic photograph was posted on Snapchat. And she gave an interview with The Sun saying she was a true crime fan and that's why she did it. And I just find it so lacking of empathy. And Smith met McMichael at a mutual friend's baby shower. Eight years ago, Smith and Lindsay McMichael were in a driver education class together. And she's making a joke of it. She took it so lightly. Smith says that McMichael claimed she could use her dad's position as a DA investigator for personal gain. People who she's dated say that uh, she threatened them. With my daddy as an investigator, you'll never get away with anything. On Tuesday, we tried reaching the McMichaels for comment. We only heard a dog barking at the door. They did not answer. McMichael told the son that posting a picture of Arbery's body was poor judgment. Smith thinks the shooting and the actions of the McMichael family are unacceptable. There's no reason to involve a gun when you're making a citizen's arrest. Attorneys for Greg and Travis McMichael have said that not all facts of the case have come to light and that their clients are innocent. Troy Kless, First Coast News, on your... All right. 
Let me get back over here. Y'all hear that? Y'all heard that, right? So, she posted the young man's picture up on Snapchat. And she really thought that her brother, her dad was going to get them um, up out of here because he was an in, uh, uh, um, investigator, um, a cop. Uh, and, you know, that's what she really thought. This is a savage family, if you ask me. The whole family is is the savage. My God. My God. I mean, I don't know no other way to describe it. So now, what okay. Now, after her okay, without okay, her saying that, that's her name is Lindsay McMichael, by the way. And like I said, one of the brothers that didn't want to speak out much because he said, um, he, he, you know, he, he, he's really angry. But they did convince him to say a few things. This is uh, Ahmad's uncle. And I'm going to close it out with this because I thought this was kind of powerful, um, what he said. And I want to give my condolences again to that family. But I also want to honor that family. I want to honor that family for staying strong and staying the course and getting justice for your loved one. Everybody that uh, marched for him, uh, black and white and brown and all of y'all, I, I thank y'all because otherwise they would have been buried right in Gwen County like all the other dead man's bones they got there and the people that they killed. And all the cases need to be pulled back out that uh, district attorney uh, Jackie Jackson, uh, Jackie Johnson has something to do with. Oh, all of them. But I'm gonna close it out with this, y'all, and um, uh, uh, check this out. Black. And you wonder why people well, did and said that's what hurt so bad. Well, the biggest thing, hurt. Here, the biggest hurt thing is this: you, know, you look at a child; I, it's just like your child out there by himself. And you got these three grown old men, it's a child. And see, we always protected each other. We know how he feel. He wasn't, we wasn't there to, that's what really hurt me. That we wasn't there to protect him. You see what I'm saying? And they took advantage of him. Like, Come on, bro. They took advantage of him. They took God to kill a child. To kill a child. That wasn't nothing but a baby. Mm -hmm. These old men, even the man's son was older than him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know in, in Georgia, there was no hate crime statute before or at the time of Ahmad's death. Kevin, did you know that? Were you surprised that Georgia does not have a hate crime statute as of February 23rd, 2020? Well, it's because all the old laws on the books. Thank you. It's a, it's a, that's all. Yeah, yeah. I've seen many of your faces at the pretrial hearings. And you've heard a lot of really difficult details. I heard a lot. What is it? Against the law to wear purple on Sunday? Tell me how you prepare for the trial now that it is so close to starting. Well, you know, uh, of course, the, the trial is over and um, there was a, a guilty verdict. And again, I thank God that that happened and that all of the people, um, even the, the, the cop, that remained anonymous, the one that slipped the information to the family because he knew that if they knew he was telling them that they was covering up, they would have got him. He would have been a black family uh, lover, which in essence is a nigger lover. And you know, there's a place for you out there. But I still say we got to share these labels. We have to replace the system of white supremacy with a system of justice. Because ain't nothing going to be right until we do. Nothing. And all this um, cover up, cover up. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. No more trying to reform shit. This just showed you. That's what they do. But I thank God you're not always going to have 12 open-minded or 11 open-minded white folk like that. Like that was on that jury. All you needed was one, one. 
that they were trying to appeal to. They messed this up. Can't have no obvious racist. If that wasn't a, 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 a just a modern day lynching, I don't know what it was. How dare you give self-defense a bad name with that crap? They all poor. And I hope every day you in jail, you get your ass whooped. Unless you repent. I mean, really repent. And so you want to take whatever you got to take from whatever those black inmates that you around. You may survive. You may not. That's that's all up to God. But you still got to repent for killing that boy the way y'all did. Y'all some animals. And that's what you were on that day. You were some animals. I'm done with it. Um, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. And I want to know what y'all think about that. I, I, I mean, have you ever put yourself in my shoes? A lot of times you know you expect the police killing or you know something like that. But that was so low down. Let me know what y'all think. I'll see you in the next video.